tell me what to feed my child. I demand you fire this employee now! R slash Entitled Parents. What is up guys, Mr. Reddit here, back with another episode of Entitled Parents Stories. R slash Entitled Parents is one of my favorite subreddits, and I really enjoyed making this. Now kick back, relax, and enjoy the show. Our first story we'll be reading today. Entitled Mom Spits in My Face Over Garden Hose from user Amthab. After that, Entitled Parent Tries to Steal from My Mom from user Reboot Data Chips. After that, Who Authorized You to Be Closed on Time on Christmas Eve from user Dadvidis Canon. After that, Entitled Mom Lets Entitled Kid Break the Number One Unwritten Rule of Tabletop from user Mordo85. And then we'll be finishing up with She Gave My Kid a Health Pamphlet? Fire her. From user Rianne Bernard. Thank you so much to our authors who have been sharing your stories on the r slash Mr. Reddit subreddit. I'm really looking forward to reading more of them in future videos. And welcome to the newest members of the Re Army. Lini, Ridrin, and Maria. And if you're new, join the Re Army by subscribing for new stories from Reddit every single day. Entitled Mom Spits in My Face Over Garden Hose. This is a first submission to a big sub, so feel free to give conservative criticism. But please be gentle. I edited to correct formatting mistakes, and I am not on mobile, nor is English my second language, so I own any mistakes. I already put this in the main Entitled Parent sub, but I wanted to put it here for your consideration. I'm kind of new to Reddit, so if I did it wrong, I'm sorry. Preface This happened about 20 years ago, so in deference to the decade, late 90s to early 2000s, our Entitled Mother will not be a Karen. She will be a Brittany. I also want to make it clear that her two little girls, who we'll call Sandra and Sally, were darling and were in no way entitled kids. Also, I can't stand stories that have been obviously embellished. Like, really, who actually uses phrases like, My darling angel, on the regular. So I am doing my best to relate the story exactly as it occurred. Please keep in mind, however, that this was 20 years ago, and no one's memory is perfect. Okay. So my boyfriend and I have moved into a house that we are renting. We are in our early 20s with bills in our own name and feeling like we are adulting for the first time. We both have jobs that pay above minimum wage, but we are in no way well off as we are just starting out. Enter Sandra and Sally, who were around the age of 8 and 9 years. I was quite taken with them and the feelings were fairly mutual. They were at that age where having a big girl as a friend was very flattering to them and would get very excited when invited to hang out with me and my friend. I would save things like costume jewelry and body glitter to give them as random gifts, after making sure they weren't forbidden to have the items, and in general it seemed like we had lucked out in having them living next door. Of course, if that were the case, then I wouldn't be posting this story here. Introducing Brittany. She of the thundering thighs encased in booty shorts, she was too young for a let me speak to your manager haircut. Oh no, she had the requisite. Crunchy, sky high, buy me a Zima perm. That was par for the course in the 80s. Tiffany was a single mom and always needing something. A lot of times, that also involved waking us up. 8 a.m. in the dead of winter. Can you jump my car? 11 p.m. on a school night. I don't have anything for Sandra and Sally's dinner. 2 a.m. on a Friday night, Saturday morning. Woohoo! She didn't always have to need something to wake us up. In a kind of deviation to the usual oblivious form of entitled mother, Brittany started to catch on to the fact that she was annoying us with her constant intrusions, so she started sending her children to do her dirty work for her. I didn't mind. I actually preferred their sweet little smiles to her vacant-eyed stares. Until the... Dun, dun, dun. Dun! Day of the Garden Hose It was a hot July day, and I was doing some light house cleaning in our air-conditioned home when I hear a tentative tap at our front door. Sandra and Sally were standing there, looking a strange combination of scared and bursting with excitement. Hi, girls. What's up? We got a swimming pool. Sally was dancing around in excitement. Mommy said she'll fill it up if we can use your faucet. 
Now, I lived in an urban area, and it wasn't entirely common to have hose hookups, so we were kind of an anomaly. Our hookup was located in our backyard. To get to it, you had to open two gates. We had a chain-link fence and a privacy fence. Not sure why. It was like that when we moved in. The privacy fence was located just inside the chain-link fence. I assumed that someone wanted a privacy fence, but didn't want to go to the trouble of removing the chain-link one. But I digress. I loved these kids, but water bills weren't exactly cheap, and, as I mentioned, we weren't well off, as we were just starting out. I hated to disappoint the girls, which I'm sure is why Brittany sent them, but this time I had to tell them no. I also told them that they could probably attach the hose to their kitchen sink, and, if Brittany didn't know how, I would help her. They thanked me and went away, looking slightly dejected. I felt bad, but didn't think much of it. Hours later... I'm taking a bath, and I notice that the water pressure is a bit low. I bet you can see where this is going. Boyfriend comes in and notifies me that our street has a river running through the middle of it. I say I'm not surprised, with the rain falling so hard, I can hear it outside the window. When he informs me that it is still sunny out, it all comes together in my head with an audible click. I throw on my robe and run outside. Sure enough, Brittany had trespassed onto our property opened our back fence, and ran a hose over it to fill up their pool. Mind you, this is not just a standard baby pool, but one of those large, inflatable, above-ground pools that comes up to about the waist on an average-sized adult. It held thousands of gallons of water. Not only has she done this after being told no, but she has let it run so long that it has overflowed and caused her yard and ours to flood and the water is running into the street. I'm sure she did this purposely out of spite. Tell me no, will she? Well, I'll show her. Very petty. I was furious. Brittany didn't answer when I knocked, so being young and not knowing exactly what to do, I called the police, who were less than helpful. They tell us that they recommended pulling the hose into our house so she would have to come and talk to us. We know the water bill is going to be astronomical. An hour or so later, a mortified-looking Sandra and Sally come and knock on my door. Miss O.P., can we have our garden hose? Instead of bringing them into the argument, I gently explain to them that the hose is way too big for their little arms to carry. It's at least double the size of a regular one. And tell them to ask their mommy to come and get it, and I will give it to her. An undetermined amount of time later, I hear the front door creak slowly open, and see the hose, as if by magic, start to slither out. I quickly open the door and tell a shocked-looking Brittany that I needed to talk to her. I'm sure you know that I told Sandra and Sally that before I can finish the first sentence, Brittany cuts me off, jumping around, calling me names, ranting unintelligibly, and takes a swing at me. I dodge it, and she spits in my face. I am thoroughly disgusted and furious. I want to cry and go into a rage-induced fury at the same time, but by some miracle, I managed to hold on to my dignity and self-control. I'm calmly wiping my face and smiling benignly. Thank you. That's assault. Without another word, I turn on my heel and shut the door in her face. I go inside to call the cops, and they send out Barney Fife, who was, surprise, 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 less than helpful. I tell him I want to press charges for assault and theft. I didn't think of trespassing at the time. He goes off to talk to her and comes back looking like he had accomplished some real big boy stuff. I told her she has to pay your water bill when it comes in, or she will go to jail. I just looked at him. As far as the charges go, she did commit theft of services. And assault. As I said, she committed theft of services. But the best we can do is file a report. I rolling so hard that I saw the back of my skull. Unfortunately, that was the anticlimactic end of the story. Brittany avoided us after that and kept the girls away from us, so that relationship ended. Our water bill was $40 over the regular amount. Minimum wage was less than $5 an hour then. So yeah, that was a day's wages. We taped a copy of the bill to Brittany's door and later found it crumpled up in our mailbox. When we informed the police, they told us it was a civil matter. Next up we've got, Entitled Parent Tries to Steal from My Mom. Once long ago, 
In a time when my age started with a one, I worked at a service desk in a large family-run grocery store that was in four different states. At that time, the rules are different from what they are now. With permission, one could cash a personal check for $100 without needing to buy anything. So, on a busy weekend day, I'm busy at work and my poor mom comes up to the desk just crying. Her purse was taken from the grocery cart. I call security and one of my managers. Down comes our biggest security guard. Mom only came lower chest height on him. There was over a foot difference in height. He, as calm as a kitten, gets mom calmed down, taking her upstairs to look over the cameras and call the local city PD. I'm still working distracted and my boss is staying nearby because he knows I'll bolt to my mom's side if I'm given the chance. That's when she comes up to the desk. In her cart is a familiar looking purse. Hooked to the strap is a keychain with a very familiar face on a sports pitcher. Immediately, I can feel a twitch start. She laughs at all the action that was taking place. How silly little old people get. It's just a purse. I want to hit her, but I laugh instead while trying to subtly get my boss's attention, loudly asking what she needs and rubbing one of my ears as if an explanation as to why I'm talking so loud. During this year, ear infections were going around schools, causing hearing loss. The lady pulls out a checkbook cover that if she had flipped it over, she would have seen two familiar-looking people on the custom cover. She explains that she needs gas and cigarettes and didn't want to write two checks, so could she please get $100? Now, gas prices during this time sometimes dipped beneath $1, and cigs were less than 4 so why would she need $100? I, however... Say I need to ask for approval since we were limiting check cashing limits. The lady just nods and proceeds to write out the check and falters when signing. Darn that twitch I was getting. So I call the security office and play off that I was calling my boss for approval. Our mountain of a man security guy clues in quickly and tells me to stall as police are on their way. So I happily tell the lady that yes, I can cash her check, but sadly I can only do $50. Lady gives one of those forced laugh smiles, saying she needs to rewrite the check. Ripping both the check and carbon out, I hold out my hand and point out we have a shredder, so to keep her account number safe from the voided check, she handed over the ripped up check. It doesn't take long that she's struggling through the spelling of our last name and makes a newly married joke. I just force smile and nod my head. She pulls out a stir ID card from the checkbook and hands them to me. Humming... I start to run the check and put it in, in such a way that I know the machine will jam. In the meantime, the security guard comes down and out of the corner of my eyes, I catch a flash of silver hair with my mom standing behind him. He moves to keep her out of sight from the entitled parent. Proclaiming myself having a rotten day, I have to carefully extract the jammed check from the register. I apologize profusely to the woman and step from the front of the desk to the back to get cash for the check saying that the cash office manager will have to look at the check to see if we can use it or if, sadly, we'll need a third check written. The entitled parent is looking a bit miffed, but I have a feeling she knows if she makes any of a fuss, we just won't cash a check at all for her, as we were already doing this as a favor with our check cashing funds being low. That's when I hear them. It's the boys in blue asking for her to step to the side. She, after failing to attempt to explain herself out of trouble, finally exclaims, how the heck did I know the check didn't belong to her? Reaching forward, I flip the keychain to face her. She finally looks at it and then at me. The picture may have been a year old, but darn if I still haven't changed since high school. Her eyes got wide. Because the purse and contents are my mom's. Mom got her purse back. Lady was carted away since she also attempted fraud and attempted check cashing. Mom did go to the trial, but I can't remember what happened, and I would need a medium to ask Mom. Next we've got, Who authorized you to be closed on time on Christmas Eve? Hello, I've posted this on Reddit before, but it seemed too good not to share on here. And since I'm new to the re-army, I figured I'd contribute. Cast, we've got me. Your humble OP here. We've got entitled woman. We've got awesome coworker. Let's go. This happened back in 2016 in my first job, which I quit last year after Easter. 
This was due to the fact I found it was more important I be there for my family since my job was interfering with my ability to support my family emotionally. I worked in a grocery store chain here in New England and it was meant to be temporary. I ended up working one and a half to two years as I wanted to have experience. My first Christmas Eve there is when this story took place. Being fresh meat at the store and having only worked for a month, I was still peppy and happy to be employed. I felt grown up and ready to go. Scheduled for a shift, I can't remember how long, I was due to leave at 6 p.m. At the store, we closed at 6.30 for holidays and managers would have to stand outside the doors so no one would come in. It was that bad for the last-minute shoppers. I had a line of about three people left, and it was ten minutes before I had to leave. I also don't drive, and it was snowing, and my mom or step-parent picked me up. So I wanted to hurry as it was also Christmas Eve, and my family has traditions to do. But two of these people had full carts, and I ended up going over my shift. My manager saw this and said for me to give my sign to a customer so they could help me with my closing. Here's where our villain comes in. She's an older woman, who I'm guessing was a grandmother and wanted to leave. I went to give her my sign. Excuse me, ma'am. I've been waiting here for ten minutes. What are you doing? Oh, I'm still going to ring you up. Don't worry. I smile, but she frowns and looks as if she's been sucking on lemons for an hour. I was finishing up with the customer in front of her when that entitled woman slams her items on the conveyor belt. That took me off guard. Had I done something wrong? Oh, apparently I had. When she came up to my register while I started scanning her items, I didn't even have a chance to say the standard. Do you have your store card? When she snaps at me. Who told you you could close? Oh, my manager, ma'am. You see, it's almost closing time, and I was supposed to get off almost half an hour ago. Where is he? I want to speak to your manager. I have a lot of things to say to him about this. I'm sorry, ma'am. I was only handing you my sign to put up so no one else could come in. I was still going to ring you up. I want to speak to your manager. That's when my awesome co-worker steps in. She was helping bag for me as I needed to get home fast. Ma'am, she was meant to get off 20 minutes ago. We give customers our signs if we're going over and the manager closed her. This isn't her fault. Now, would you like paper or plastic? This shut the woman up. I'm guessing since I had just turned 18 in October and was young, she didn't listen. But she huffed and puffed the entire transaction. When she left, I gave my awesome coworker a hug and thanked her almost in tears. I'm a sensitive person and have anxiety and depression on top of PTSD. People yelling at me can cause triggers or anxiety attacks. She was my hero that night, and I got home safe and sound. But ever since that night, Whenever the woman came back, I had shots of anxiety and prayed I wasn't going to ring her up. Thankfully, I haven't seen her since I quit. So, I guess it's a semi-happy ending. Next we've got... Entitled Mom Let's Entitled Kid Break the Number One Unwritten Rule of Tabletop. Hi there, this is my first post. English is my first language, but I am an idiot, so excuse any mistakes. Reposting this from r slash entitled parents. For our cast, we've got the Entitled Mom, Entitled Kid, we have The Friend, and we have Me, Embodiment of Painted Chaos. So this happened a few years ago. I live near the headquarters of a tabletop games company, which is a bit of a tourist attraction for gamers, and part of the building is a massive gaming room with loads of tables with different scenery for all the different games they make. So, Friend and I decided that we would meet on the weekend to have a game together. Now, I won't say I am a major league painter, but I had won local competitions and had a few really cool converted models. It was fairly quiet at the tables for a Saturday as we were pulling our armies out of their cases and setting up. We spotted Entitled Mom and Entitled Kid coming out of the on-site pub, so looked around 8 or 9 and hyperactive. As I am pulling out a few vehicles, they come up to our table and start looking over my shoulder at everything in front of me, and I turn back to my table. I notice that Entitled Kid has picked up my leader model with what looked like sticky Cheeto-dusted fingers. Number one rule of tabletop. Never touch anyone else's models without permission. Sorry, my dude. Can you put that back on the table? I need to use him in a minute. Excuse me? He is just looking. 
why she needed to raise her voice was beyond me. Sorry, but as you can appreciate, I am about to play and your son didn't ask to crack. Entitled Kid dropped the pewter model, sending the limbs in different directions as it hit the stone floor. Seriously? Mom, I want to go to the shop now. I want orcs like this guy. My friend was like, Dude, you seriously just smashed his boss, and you're not even going to say sorry? It's just a toy. Get over it. Entitled Mom just grabbed Entitled Kid by the wrist and paced off. I was on my hands and knees picking up the parts and placing them on the phone on my case. Not only had it fallen to pieces, but a lot of the paint on the face had been scratched, meaning that I would have to rebuild and repaint him. It felt life-draining to have something you put effort into destroyed in a second. I saw Entitled Mom and Entitled Kid leave the shop apart, and I flipped her off as she just seemed to scowl at me. My boss never was the same as the first time I painted him, but I moved on. I hope this doesn't happen to other people. For those asking, I was playing Warhammer 40,000 at Warhammer World Headquarters in Nottingham. I didn't call police or anything, as I mentioned in the intro, I'm an idiot, and I was preoccupied making sure I had all the pieces and my friend was on a tight schedule. I ended up having to hold on to his case for the night as he had to leave for work right after, so I wanted to get the game started and finished ASAP. For those who want to see my level of painting, this is my latest display piece. Oh, nice. And our final story of the day. She gave my kid a health pamphlet? Fire her. I watched Penguin Storytime post an Entitled Parents video about Entitled Parents trying to get people fired, and I thought I would post this. For our cast, we've got me, the Entitled Parent, and the manager. I had graduated high school and was waiting for a course at the university, Introduction to Culinary Arts in February, so got a job at a certain sandwich shop to make some money. My mom let me live with her while I either was getting schooling or paying bills, way more than fair, and was about a month into the job when this happened. A kid, about 10, and his dad walk in one evening. Let me tell you, I hope not to sound too mean. Uh, this kid was fat. Dudley Dursley fat. Every step caused sweat to run down his face, and his order was the answer to why. The dad ordered his sandwich and another for what I assume to be the mom, and then the kid orders double meat meatball sub, two times extra bacon, extra cheese, and no vegetables. No intervention from the dad. I filled the order, but internally was terrified for this kid. If he was eating like this without his parents intervening, how was he going to survive to adulthood? I couldn't say anything, but I had one thing I could do that wouldn't step on any toes. I put in a nutrition information pamphlet that you can ask for into his bag. I rang the order up and they left. I forgot this interaction until two days later after my days off. I'm just starting my shift when a Karen shows up, sunglasses indoors, can I speak to your manager haircut, and a glare on her face. I greeted her with, Welcome to the store. How may I... She interrupts me with, Where is the manager? I get him and continue working while listening. I hate being interrupted, so I wanted to know what her problem was. How may I... What is this? Holding out the nutritional information pamphlet like it was a used tissue. Oh, that's one of our nutritional information pamphlets. They show all the information about each of our products. Why was it in my son's bag? Well, one of our employees must have put it in. He looks at me with a knowing look, and I nod at him. My manager was pretty good at his job, if a tad nepotistic. If the order is a bit unhealthy, then we encourage them to put them in the bags. Blatant lie, but a good one. Entitled mom is red-faced. How dare you tell me what to feed my child? I demand you fire this employee now! Manager, calmly with an I'm not putting up with your BS stare. I won't do that, and if you continue to shout my establishment, I will ask you to leave. Your establishment? I'm going to speak with the owner and get you fired too. Plot twist coming. You are speaking to the owner. Now please leave. Entitled parent sputters, then leaves. I worked there for another two months when my mom and I had to move, but that was one of my favorite experiences.
Give Mr. Reddit a thumbs up on this video, or I'm going to sue you. And congrats to today's Generals of the Re, Joel Sargent, Bryson Sodhoff, and Lobo Vermello. That's all for now, but don't be blue. I'll be back soon with more stories for you. Remember to listen to Mr. Reddit every night, so your dreams will be wonderful like you are and bright.